Hi everybody, thanks for stopping by. Today we're gonna to go over part two of a three-part series about TV and film set lingo. A lot of it's gonna sound weird, some of it's gonna be funny, but I'm gonna tell you all about it and we're gonna start right now. Hey Steve, I need a ball buster. Flying in. Okay guys, the first AD just asked for a ball buster and I told her I'm bringing it in right away. She asked for a 35 pound sandbag, hence the name, Ball Buster. It's used for stands, C stands, lighting stands, all kinds of set dressing, uh, maybe on the green so the flowers and bushes and stuff don't fall over, and just for weight, period. So if we're using counterweight on a dolly or something like that, that's what we would be using and calling for what would be a Ball Buster. Thick canvas bags with a black handle on both sides pretty heavy and we we carry anywhere from 24 to 36 uh, per unit on set so we have a lot of bags out there so anyways ball buster C stand some people may know what it is some people may not the C stand or the century stand is the number one used item by any grip on any production anywhere that's doing any kind of production work it's used for holding things picking things up taking things away protecting things making things stronger it's called a c-stand or a century stand because there is 100 ways or more to use it and some of the old timers like myself says it takes you 100 years to master it and learn all the different ways so a little set humor there for you but a c-stand is a very vital piece of the grip equipment You'll see, I don't know, we carry probably 24 to 36 regular C-stands. We have short C-stands, and we probably carry 6 to 12 of those. The short C-stands have 20-inch uh, grip arms. The larger C-stands have 40-inch grip arms. And uh, we also carry 60-inch grip arms to put in the larger stands, just in case. So a C-stand uh, is... <laughs> It's useful in all many departments. Camera uses it for monitors. We use it for everything under the sun when it comes to production. So again, very useful item. You'll see them on set. If you ever see a grip or anybody portraying to be a crew member on TV, they always hand that person a pair of gloves, a wrench in their pocket, and a C-stand to carry past camera. So it's pretty funny to us to see that because that's not what we do. But anyways, that is a C-stand and uh, now you know what a C-stand is. Grip department, I need a shoddy for camera. Shoddy for camera, copy that. All right, everybody, the first AD just asked me for a shoddy for camera. So what she was asking for was a shot bag, which is a 20 to 25 pound sand bag, basically. But instead of the sand, it's got metal shot in it little pieces of BBs, little stuff like that. Been around for a long time, but the purpose for those, those things are super, super heavy and dense, used for smaller confined spaces. They hold down C stands, they hold down light stands, just like with the regular ball buster, they, they hold down a lot of things. However, they also are used a lot of the times to hold down hi-hat packages, which is a, a stand for a, a camera that goes right directly on the ground. So we need wedges and a shot bag on that hi-hat package to make sure it stays level and the camera doesn't move once it gets there. So there you have it. Now you know what a shoddy is. And no, it's not a drink, guys. Here's one that's really crazy. A C-47. Hmm. Sounds like an airplane or something, doesn't it? No, actually a C-47 is a catalog name for an actual wood clothespin from the Sears catalog. Back in the day, you had to justify every single thing that they paid for making movies and supplies and expendables as we call them now. Back then, they wouldn't pay for clothespins. However, they would pay for C-47s, safety devices that attach items to other items. Very good idea. And that name has stuck, gosh, for at least a hundred years. 
So C47, the good old American clothespin. A grip department. Can we get a floppy for camera? Copy that. Floppy for camera. Flying in. The first AD just asks us for a 4x4 floppy. And no, that's not what you think it is, you dirty-minded little devils, you. No, what it is, it's a 4x4 piece of duvetine on a wire or metal frame that is 4 feet by 4 feet that has a pin. It's called a floppy because it has an additional piece of 4x4 four four piece of duvetine that covers it all. So when you flop it open from the Velcro that holds it up, it goes from a 4x4 four four piece of duvetine to an 8x4 piece of duvetine. Really handy item. It's an item that we use to uh, shade people, sound department, camera department, uh, camera operators, directors and stuff when we can't get a, a, a pop-up tent in for them for Video Village and stuff. So we make do with what we have and uh, it's the grip department. We cut the light and we make shade and we do that a lot with four by four floppy. So when somebody says, I need a floppy, you know what to look for. Grip department, I need a number three, please. Copy that, flying in. First AD just asked me for an A clamp or a pony clamp, I believe the trade name is. We call it a number three. You've seen them on set, you've seen them all over the place. Big A clamp, medium A clamp, and a small A clamp, or a number one, a number two, and a number three. Used largely on sets all over the place whether it's the grip department, the lighting department, sound, camera, set dressing, wardrobe, whoever, those clamps are universal and used every single place on the planet when it comes to studio work. The reason it's called a number three, the jaw opens three inches wide. It's called a number two because the jaw opens two inches wide. And on a number one, of course, the jaw opens one inch wide. So if you need a pony clamp, just let me know, do you need a number one, a number two, or number three? Baby plate. When somebody asks for a baby plate, it's called a baby plate, a nail-on plate, something like that. What they're asking for, it's a small piece of metal, this flat plate, that has a 5 8 inch pin in it, a baby pin, and it has anywhere from four to six holes in it, the plate, so you can screw it to things. Walls, doorways, pieces of lumber, trees, whatever you have to. And what that's for is to hang smaller lights on. You can get a baby plate on top of a wall on a set. You can get a baby plate over here by the door, things like that. Um, so it's just a piece of grip equipment that they attach a lamp to from the electricians and the uh, electric department. So when you hear baby plate, that's all they're talking about. It's a fixture to hang a light somewhere on set, okay? Baby plate. Okay, everybody, one phrase you're gonna hear on set at the end of the night, most of the crew members are just waiting to hear this phrase, and that is, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. And what that means, guys, is we're done. We finished our day, we've shot our shots, the actors have done their thing, We've done our special effects. That's a wrap on the production. We shut down the camera. We turn off the lights. We clean up the sets and then we go home. Again, if that's a Friday night, we'll come in on Monday unless we're working a sixth or seventh day. And if that's a wrap on a weekday, we'll see them the next morning, whatever that call time may be. So there you go, that's a wrap. So now you know. Okay, guys, that's the end of part number two of a three-part series, TV and film set lingo. Thanks a lot for sticking around to the end. Now you have a little bit more insight on what the grips call their equipment when it's called for on the radio, on set, or even on off-production when we need it. We still use those same exact names. So we have a third part. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get all of the new videos that are coming out. And also... If you didn't see the first of the three-part series on TV and film set lingo, I'll put a link down in the description. Please go check it out. 
Thank you so much for stopping by. And guys, that's a wrap on this episode. We'll see you next time.